What's going on, KSI Nation? Kendrick here with my official follow-up review to the CW Hour versus Crisis on Earth X crossover. If you are new to the Kenimation Studio channel, please hit the subscribe, subscribe button at subscribe button at the bottom. Hit that bell right next to the subscribe button so you know when a new video of mine gets uploaded to YouTube, you'll be the first to know. All platforms and links to my social media accounts are in the description box below. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, anything else you can think of is right there. So if you want to follow me and like all those social media platforms, that's where you need to go. You can also make a contribution to the Patreon account. All contributions will go right back into the channel, as well as earn you some free rewards and perks from yours truly. With that being said, as you guys know, I did a short review after Monday's episode of Crisis on, on Monday's first half of Crisis on Earth X, which included Supergirl and Arrow. You already know what my thoughts are about that, and if you're not, you can definitely check it out in the menu right on top. The second part aired last night, which included Arrow, I mean, not Arrow, which included The Flash and Legends of Tomorrow. So that was part two of the Crisis on Earth X storyline. I know I said it before on Monday, but I will say it again. This is ha perhaps one of the best crossovers that they've done. Um, last year's crossover... You know, it started with Supergirl, but it didn't start with Supergirl. It didn't start until the end of the episode. So the episode, Supergirl episode was essentially just an episode of Supergirl. This one, right off the bat, everyone is included. Everyone. And I'm saying to myself, this is how you do a crossover. Or at least superhero-wise on TV. The Arrow, the um, episode, the Flash episode, I thought was, I thought was great. It was definitely... It's, it's, it's definitely one of the better episodes that they've had this season. To me, The Flash has been kind of eh. It's been kind of eh this season. You know, I'm, I'm hoping it'll pick up after the after the mid season break, which is going to happen after next week's episode. I still actually I still haven't watched the trailers for those episodes yet. What they're going to be, so I'll watch those later. But I was definitely, I definitely enjoyed myself. Um, as you all know, if you haven't checked it out, spoilers. We did lose. No, before we lost, before I get to who we lost, I will talk about who we gained. We got introduced to the Ray, which I thought was pretty cool. He comes from Earth X. And we also got reintroduced to Leonard Snart, or in this case, Leo Snart from Earth X, who is Citizen Cold rather than Captain Cold. I thought that was a pretty drastic change. Instead of being like a closed off, you know, cold hearted criminal, he's nice and lighthearted, and he's actually in a relationship with the Ray. His actual name escapes me at the moment, so forgive me for that. But I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I forget this game. I forget the guy's name from Supergirl, who, who's like pretty much like the tech advisor for the, you know, for um, Kara and the rest of them, but he played a general in this episode of, of, our, of The Flash for Earth X. And he was like, he wasn't like playing no game. So that was a good character change for him. It was a good character change for him. I really liked it. Even though I hated the decision he was making, it was a good character change for him. You could tell he was definitely someone who had been fighting this war for a long time. And he was just trying to end it like anyone would. Um, that leads us into, into who we lost. Um, we, we lost Professor Martin Stein. We lost one half of Firestorm. Throughout, throughout most of the season of Legends of Tomorrow, and even including the, um, this crossover event, you know, they're trying to figure out a way to separate Firestorm, essentially. But I think they're also trying to figure out a way for Jefferson to keep some form of his powers of some kind. I had thought that they would have given Stein a send-off of him actually retiring and being with his family. I would have thought that maybe all the um, geniuses in the group would have figured out a way for um, Jefferson to maintain a firestorm matrix within himself and then let Martin Stein retire and actually go be with his family, which is what he's always wanted. Um, unfortunately, that wasn't the case. He ends, he ends up getting shot by a Nazi. And I have to admit, you know, the first time I watched it, I was sad. I was extremely sad. But watching it the second time, I was just, I was, I was legit hurt. The other thing, but the thing about that is, um, the, the, the thing about that is, um, if you guys have, didn't know, 
the actor who plays Martin Stein, um, Victor Garber, was going to be leaving the series. Um, it, it was reported that he's gonna he wants to go back to stage acting. He wants to go back to theater. So he wasn't going to be on the series for long this season anyway. So when they were when they introduced the idea of separating Foster, I was like, yeah, he's he's on his way out. And like I said, I had thought that they were going to just let him retire out, be with his family, let him get a happy ending, maybe try to find a replacement for Jefferson to, you know, fuse with to become Firestorm. But, you know, him, you know, essentially him dying, you know, I think I think that I think that messed a lot of people up who watched it. It it, it messed me up. It it messed me up seeing him go, you know. I mean, and we've had a lot of deaths between all these shows and stuff, but I think him going was probably the hardest, and I and I and I can and I'm okay to I'm and I'm okay to admit that him him going was definitely the hardest one to take. It was really rough. The acting was really good too, especially watching Jefferson not being able to keep himself together. You know, he wasn't able he just wasn't able to keep himself together. And, and you know, and the thing is that his it wasn't his Vic, um Martin Stein's death didn't just affect you know the legends of tomorrow it affected everyone essentially in the arrowverse it affected it affected you know sarah it affected um barry it affected um caitlin it affected everyone who was a part who's a part of that adam universe so when he so when he passed on it it was it was really hard it was it was really hard but aside from that you know the fighting was great, and I have to say, for all those characters, everyone got equal time on camera. It, it, they, they worked it to perfection. They really worked it to perfection. So I, I really enjoyed our crossover. I tweeted out on Monday, I tweeted out on Monday that if you didn't like Justice League, then you should probably be watching the CW right now, because right now... The CW is, is essentially doing a better Justice League than Justice League. Even though I liked Justice League, I did. But, you know, the, the Crisis on Earth X was just, it was just fantastic. Seeing Stephen Amell, Melissa Benoist to playing evil doppelgangers of themselves, having, you know, Harrison Wells, Eobard Thawne, Reverse Flash pop up again. And it's like, doesn't this dude just die? And it's funny because at one part where Barry looked like he was getting ready to kill him, I'm like, you know what, Barry? I, 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 I think I think you can kill him this time. You know, I know you don't kill, but I I, I think it might be okay. I, th I don't think we'll be mad at you. It's just like the flat, just like Ezra Miller, Ezra Miller's flash said in the movie. You know, if she if she, you know, she said about one, uh, he said about one woman, if she kills you, we'll back her up. That's how we were. Like if you kill him, we'll back you up. Ain't no big deal. Arrow killed evil Arrow. Uh, Overgirl essentially exploded from too much solar radiation, so there was no big beef about that. But I thought it, it was it was a well done. It was a it was just a well done crossover. If I had to rate it, I would definitely give it a nine point nine. No 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 no. Actually, I'll give it a nine point seven out of ten. I would give it a nine point seven out of ten, and here's the reasons why. And this is something I've been talking about with a couple of people, especially my girlfriend. I really wish they stopped um, playing out Martian Manhunter. I think it would have been. I, th I think it would have been really cool if the Martian Manhunter showed up for just the last fight, just the very last fight. I think it would have been cool for him to show up. And. I really had hope that they would have let Kid Flash join in the fray too, because the few things that he did in the crossover were spectacular. I really enjoyed them. I really, really did. And I wish they didn't delegate him to just being like security. I really wish he had gotten in the mix too. Um, I don't know what they're going to do next year, if they're even thinking about next season's crossover event. I mean, they've already they dealt with Vandal Savage for the most part. They've dealt with aliens, and they've dealt with an alternate Earth this time around. So uh, my my thing is, what's next for them to tackle? Unless they start fight, fighting amongst each other, 
That's the only thing I can see happening unless they, unless they fight each other, do some kind of civil war type mess or I don't know something. It depends on who they introduce. But that's my that's my take on a crossover. I really enjoyed it, and um, it would be interesting to see if anyone takes all four of those episodes and cuts them and strings them together into one like four hour four hour long movie. I think that would be cool to see. But I know you guys on YouTube are pretty good at that stuff, so I wouldn't be surprised if you guys have already done it so done so already. In any case, post your comments in the comment section below. Let me know what you thought about the Crisis on Earth X crossover event on the CW. Let me know what you would like to see in the next crossover. Leave it in the comment section below, and maybe we can have a discussion about that. Because right now, I have no idea where they can go next season. I really don't, as far as a crossover. So if you guys have an idea of what you would like to see, you know, let me know in the comment section. Or, or And if anything, maybe I'll do a top five. Maybe I'll do a top five, you know, scenarios I'd like to see for next season's Arrowverse crossover. Maybe I will. I'm not quite sure yet. If you enjoyed this review, hit the thumbs up. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down. Share this video with all your friends. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you enjoy what you see. I'm out. Peace.